The Make Megahertz Xbox HDMI mod is a digital-to-digital -digital kit that can be installed inside all versions of the original Xbox. The video is pulled directly from the GPU's Pixel Data Bus, and the audio is pulled from the SPDIF output, then they're both encoded and sent to the HDMI port, which takes the place of the original analog output. That's right, fully digital audio and video, compatible with every revision of the Xbox, and no cutting required. This mod could be installed in a completely stock Xbox, but Make Megahertz strongly recommends using a modded Xbox as their configuration software and firmware updates are performed through a homebrew app. So let's take a closer look and see how it performs. The first thing to mention is this kit is compatible with every resolution the Xbox outputs and doesn't add any lag to the signal, as it's not buffering any data, it's just translating from digital to HDMI. That means 480p and 720p games work perfectly, and it's even compatible with 480i and 1080i modes as well, although I'd never recommend using interlaced resolutions on flat panels for lag reasons. More on that later. The kit is fully reversible, and is also a no-cut mod, taking the place of the original analog port. A future version of the kit might allow you to keep the analog output and mount this alongside, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. You can connect an HDMI splitter if you're just looking for dual output for use with a capture card, and connecting a lagless HDMI to component video converter would get you analog output as well, including use with a splitter so that you could still game on a CRT while capturing your stream via HDMI. Without the analog port, you would lose composite video and S-video support, but I really think Xbox games were designed to work on modern TVs. It's not like the original PlayStation with all that dithering that actually looks pretty good in composite video. I really think the signals translate very well to progressive scan modern TVs. They do have a configuration app that works with this mod, but your Xbox will either need to have a mod chip or be soft modded to access it. The app allows for basic features like a self-test, which is great to verify everything after installation. The app is also how you perform firmware updates, and while they're looking into things like automatic downloads, at the moment firmware updates require you to place the file in your applications directory and access it that way. Under the advanced options, you could do things like force how the aspect ratio is displayed and adjust the component video values. I think this is also a good time to mention that while it outputs HDMI, it's using the YPBPR color space, not RGB. That doesn't really mean anything for use on a TV, as everything should just work perfectly, but certain capture cards would require you to manually set it to the YUV color space as opposed to RGB, so it was definitely worth mentioning. This kit is also compatible with the resolution patches that are available for certain games. My favorite of these is a patch that forces all 480i games to run in 480p. This is actually something you could use on any Xbox custom BIOS, and it's my opinion that if you're already running a modded Xbox, this is definitely something you'll want to do for lag reasons. More on that later. It's also compatible with some of the 720p patches that are available for a few games that are out there. It works the same as if it was an analog output, so expect the same glitches you'd have without the mod. Cutscenes will probably be windowed in 480p, and loading screens might be off. Honestly though, as long as the game itself is compatible, it's probably worth doing, especially when you have a clean digital output like this one, because the 720p modes really do shine. Overall, this mod performed really well, but I do wish it was a bit more functional with unmodded Xboxes, as there's plenty of people out there that just want to play their discs and not worry about modding. Maybe an on-screen display and the ability to update the firmware directly could have solved that, but it's still an excellent product nonetheless. Also, modding your Xbox does open up a world of options for you, so it's something you might want to consider anyway. Okay, so now that we know how it works, let's see how it compares to other options. I think the biggest competition to the Make Megahertz HDMI kit is the Xbox 360, as almost 500 original Xbox games are compatible. The Xbox One can play about 40 titles, and the upcoming Series X will supposedly play a bunch as well. That might be the best choice for some people, but there's a lot of people out there that just want to use their original discs on original consoles. I'm definitely one of those people, and if you're watching this, chances are you might be too. 
At the moment, there aren't any other internal digital-to-digital -digital solutions available, so all the alternatives for real hardware are plug-and-play solutions. The first that comes to mind is definitely the Chimeric Systems HDMI adapter. It's an analog-to-digital converter that costs around $50 plus shipping. The adapter is designed specifically for use with the original Xbox, so there's potential for better performance than a generic ADC, and I really liked the one that I had tested. These have been constantly selling out though, leaving most people looking for other options. Now, there's plenty of generic Xbox HDMI adapters out there, and while none have the terrible lag of their 16-bit counterparts, they're not that great either. Even though they're just simple analog to digital converters, they somehow add a ton of interference to the signal. I guess they're fine if you're looking for a plug and play solution on a budget, but I'd strongly recommend looking into pretty much any other option. You could look into getting component video cables for your Xbox, but you'd want to make sure to get quality ones, or it could look just as bad as those generic HDMI cables. You could find used official Xbox or monster cables for under $100 that seem to work pretty well, provided the cables are still in good condition and don't arrive tied in a knot or anything. Another really good option would be purchasing a brand new set of high quality HD retrovision cables for the Wii, as well as an Xbox to Wii adapter. This would make the most sense if you also needed cables for your Wii, and overall it's a great solution. Although I do hope HD Retrovision will someday release component video cables directly for the Xbox. One thing to note is that I've tested many flat panel TVs that have more lag from the analog inputs than the HDMI inputs. Here's an example of how much lag I'm measuring for my TV's component video inputs, and yes, the TV is definitely in game mode. Now, here's the same TV, but tested through the HDMI input. On this and plenty of other TVs, there's a lot more lag when using the analog video inputs. I have another video that shows my lag testing setup, so you could rest assured that none of my equipment is causing any of this extra lag. Now, if you're on a budget and you already have component video cables, just go ahead and use them because the lag isn't terrible. But to be safe, if you're able to, I would pick up some kind of analog to digital converter just to remove any type of lag from the equation. For consoles like the Xbox, you can get basic ones for around $20 that just convert the signal without any kind of scaling, so there's no lag added at all. There's more advanced units that deinterlace 480i and add some other options, such as the OSSC or the RetroTank 2XM with the newly released 720p compatible firmware. Regardless of the method used, I strongly recommend deinterlacing 480p before it hits your TV, as almost every single flat panel TV will have significantly more lag in interlaced modes. Check out my TV here there's almost 10 times the lag in interlaced modes. That's why it's great that the 480i to 480p BIOS hack exists, and if you have a modded Xbox, I strongly recommend adding that. It works great with both the Make Megahertz HDMI kit, as well as component video cables. So, how do these plug-and-play solutions compare to the Make Megahertz kit? Honestly, I think the clean installation and ease of use is what sets this apart from all the other options. Performance-wise, excluding all of the bad component in HDMI cables, of course, it'll be close. I mean, you'll always have some interference when using analog cables, and a true digital solution removes that from the equation. Also, having digital audio integrated right into the HDMI signal means you could even take advantage of games that have surround sound built in without requiring an optical audio cable. It's definitely the best solution for the original Xbox at the moment, but not by a huge margin. Okay, every single time there's something released in the retro gaming community with an HDMI port on it, I get bombarded with messages from people who ask me to test it with the M cable or M classic. And I gotta be honest, in almost every single scenario I've tested, it barely made a difference. Also, their misleading marketing and the ways it gets promoted really got on my nerves, but I did lag test both in all modes and confirmed both are zero lag added devices. When I first tried it with the Xbox HDMI's 480p output, I was as equally underwhelmed as every other time I've used it and certainly didn't think it was worth $100. But I was shocked at how good it looked with 720p games. Honestly, I was really impressed. 
The sharp edges are smoothed out in a way that kind of feels like the game's being rendered at a higher resolution. I realize $100 is a lot to spend on something that'll only look right with a small portion of the Xbox's library, but if your favorite games are 720p compatible, you might seriously want to consider this. I'd someday like to do some in-depth testing with it on a PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 outputting 720p, but as of now, this is the best I've ever seen the M products work. Overall, I really liked the Make Megahertz HDMI kit, and if you're looking for the best signal from your original Xbox hardware, this is definitely the one to get at the moment. Now, of course, some people's setups might benefit from keeping the analog output, especially if you have something like a G-Comp switch and a bunch of your component video consoles already running through it, and in that case, something like a RetroTINK 2XM or OSSC might be a better option overall. And, of course, there is always the option of using newer Xbox consoles and their backward compatibility. I think price would be an overall pretty important factor as well, because if you're able to do this mod yourself, it's going to be cheaper than a lot of the component video options out there if you don't already own any of those components. But if you have to buy a kit and then hire somebody to do the mod for you, it might get a little pricey depending on your setup. Now, I'd also like to thank Dustin from Make Megahertz for sending me this Xbox to do this review, and I just want everybody to know that while I did get the Xbox for free, this is not a sponsored post. And I really hope that all of my conclusions seem pretty fair and unbiased anyway, as with all of my videos, but I always want to have full disclosure and make sure to be completely transparent, just so nobody misunderstands. I do really like the kit, just overall it might not be for everybody depending on your total setup. One last thing to mention too is that they do plan on open sourcing this entire thing at some point, which I think is really great because it helps with longevity of the product. And we'll post about that on RetroRGB as soon as any more information is available on that, as well as any other updates. And also, if you'd like to stay in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, check out the podcast that sums up all of our posts every Wednesday, which is available as a video and everywhere audio podcasts are found. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.